Amen. I was wondering if you just open in a word of prayer as we start this morning. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day, and I just thank you for giving us this time for the youth of Mount Vernon to just to show the congregation of Mount Vernon what we're made of, Lord. I just pray that you would help this service, that you would uh, speak through me, Lord, to these people, that they would be attentive to what I have to say, and that they might learn something from this that we can take throughout the week and uh, make us become a better person for the rest of our lives. I just pray for all the different situations that you would just work in them. I just pray for the topic that you would just help me to know how to say it the right way to get across to all the different people. And Lord, I just praise you for giving me this opportunity. I just thank you, Lord, for letting your son die on the cross for our sins. And I just pray that through the service, lives might be changed. All this I ask in your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This year is a year of uh, national election. We will be electing a new president for our country. And every four years, these politicians give us promises of what they will be doing. They promise lower taxes or no taxes at all, or they might be promising us other things. But when they really get into government, how many times do they really uh, fulfill those promises? Well, hardly ever. But this morning, we're going to talk about how God keeps all of our promises. And even though it, it might not look like sometimes He is fulfilling our promises and our needs, that God is still there and He's working through those situations. Uh, I'd just like to ask you if, if there's ever been a time in your life when you thought and you were talking to God and just saying, God, why are my prayer requests not getting to you? I just feel so alone. You know, my business is going down the tubes. My family's not doing very well. You know, God, why are you not helping me anymore? Why are my needs not being met? And we're going to look at that this morning. If you would turn in your Bibles to Philippians 4.19. This is a promise that many people have used over the years, but not very many people realize what it's really saying. And we're going to look at that this morning. Philippians 4.19 It says, And my God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Now, if you look at the beginning of that verse, it says that my God will meet all of your needs. It does not say the word want in there, nor will it ever say the word want in there. Every time you read that verse, it will always say your needs and your musts. And I'm just going to share with you three points that will help you to realize what this verse is talking about and how that God really does supply all of our needs. Um... First one is, God not only supplies our needs, but He supplies our needs, but not our wants. He supplies our needs, but not our wants. Um, I can remember a time when my mother and I went to Kmart, and as we were walking out, a young boy was with his father, and he was asking, he said, Daddy, can I have something, please? And his dad looked at him and said, No, son, we're going to leave. You don't need that. Don't worry about it. And the boy kind of looked at his dad and said, But, Daddy, please, I need it, please. His dad looked at him and said, No, you don't. You know, come on, we're going to go. In desperation, the son looked at his dad and said, 
Daddy, I need something. And his dad said, no, you do not need anything. And how do, you know, we look at that today, and we say, God, I need something. God looks at us and says, no, you don't, I've already given it to you. You know, that might not be a need for your life. That might be just a desire of your heart. That's not a need that I want to fulfill. And we say again, we just say, but God, I, I need something. And God says, I've already given you something. I've given you my son who died on the cross and paid for all of your sins and have granted all of your needs. I just have a, a few questions here that if you ask these questions to anything you're thinking about, there might be other questions you can think of, but it will tell you what, if it's a need or a want. And I'd just like you right now to think of a need that you've been praying about that you feel is a need, and run it by these questions and see how you stack up. Uh, point one is, physically for survival, could I do without this for more than 30 days? And the main thing is, you know, you have food, shelter, and clothing, and that kind of stuff, but does it, would you be able to survive for more than 30 days without this? Point two, is it, a, is, if it is an object, is it worn out, outgrown, or just out of style? You know, you might have a car that is 10 years old, but it might still be running as good as it was when it was brand new. And you say to yourself, I need a new car. Well, do you really need a new car or do you just want a new car? You know, you gotta look at all the different situations and see that God is supplying your needs, but that is a want in your life. Point number three, is it required for a specific purpose other than to satisfy my desires? Hard one. Kind of have to swallow that one. Because you see, we always want things. We buy these little things and we stick them up in our closets for 30 years and then sell them at garage sales. And, you know, we do nothing with them. So, you know, be careful. Is that a need or a want? You know, figure it out. If, number four, if Jesus were here today in physical form, would he need that? You know, oftentimes we put ourselves in Jesus' place. Put Jesus in your place for once. Think about what God would do. Okay, point five. Is this healthy or harmful for me to have? Because you see, if it is a need, needs are always healthy in your life. Wants could be harmful or healthy. You could go out right now to a dealership and get a rental on a car and in about a month or so when your bill comes, if you can't pay that, then you're in big trouble. That was harmful for you because you cannot pay the price on that car. So is that really a need or is that a want? Or could you supply it by other means? Not only does God supply all of our needs, all of our needs, and not all of our wants, but God also supplies our needs in His own timing. And that's very important to realize. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through this, but Abraham was given a covenant by God that, was, that he was going to have a great nation. God came to him and said, all the stars in the sky your kin will be. All the grains of the sand your kin will be. But Abraham took it in his own situation and slept with his maidservant and tried to bear children that way, which was not God's timing at all. It's not what God wanted him to do. It was out of God's will. Then God came back to him, gave him a second covenant, and said, your wife Sarai will surely bear a child. She is going to have a baby. You did it the wrong way. But in all these verses, he never says when. You look there, you say, 
God will supply my needs, but, you know, when does it say he's going to supply my needs? He doesn't say, which takes a little faith on your part. I would just like everyone to turn to Genesis 21, 1 through 3. Go fast. And in this passage, it's when Isaac is born. And you're going to see something amazing that has to do with timing. It says, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. Now up in verse 2, I don't know if you picked it out or not, but it says, Sarah became pregnant and bore son to Abraham in his old age at the very what God had promised him? The very time. Which shows God's timing. Abraham didn't know what the time was. Sarai didn't know what the time was, but God knew what the time was for him. I can think of an example of when Pastor Wood was here, and as a 16-year-old boy, hurting for kids who had been beaten and abused and were all alone. And how that through 20 years of prayer, think of that, 20 years of prayer for one thing led him to become part of Where's Valley. And that's where he is now. Praise God. Um, not only does God supply all of our needs, not all of our wants, not only does God supply all of our needs in His timing, but God also supplies our needs for our spiritual growth and not just for my physical comforts. God will use physical situations to work on our spiritual needs. And I heard an illustration uh, that a girl at our school used in her little personnel box in her yearbook as her, at her senior year, which simply stated this, Christians are a lot like tea bags. They're not much use until they're in hot water. You know, how so true that is that, you know, without growth, you know, without those sufferings in our lives, everyone would be the same. There would be no one more... You know, no one would be growing more than another one. We'd all be on the same spiritual level. And God brings those into our lives, not for our physical comforts, but for our spiritual growth. I can also think of, you know, if you got a muscle here and you want to work on that muscle, you can read about it, you can talk about it, you can you know, watch movies about it, American Gladiators or whatever. But, uh, you know, until you actually work that muscle and put resistance against that, it's not going to grow at all. You can talk all you want about it, but until you actually do that, it's not going to do very much. And i just like to point out the, uh, the woman at the well. Many of you have heard that story over and over again, where the woman had a physical need. She needed water. But God looked at that situation. Jesus was there. He looked into her heart and saw that the situation she had was one of a spiritual need. And if you keep reading, I don't know if you've ever done this, but you find out that she had had five divorced husbands before. And she was now living with another man. Think of that. Five bad relationships she had had. God saw that. Saw that was a need saw that he could use the example of water and living water. And through that, he gave her her need of spiritual life, just from being understanding. God wants to use things in our lives, not only just to solve physical face problems. He also wants to use things in our lives to solve our spiritual inner problems. Things that will take time to solve. It takes time to help. And I'd just like to challenge you today that when you ask God for your needs to be met, 
Have the faith that He's going to answer them. But give Him the time that He needs to do that. It might not be the exact, you know, it might not be exactly what you thought you needed. He might give you something totally different. And you're going to say, yeah, yeah, I needed that. I, I really didn't, you know, that was just a desire for me. I can, I thought of an example that was just so beautiful, which happened to the youth at our Mexico mission trip last year, which ties in at every single point I've been talking about. That was, we were on our way to the Hora Baptist campsite where we were going to spend the night there. And we had our brakes fail. So we pulled into a gas station and the guy told us, no, I'm sorry, can't go here, got to go across the street. We're about to close. And we waited there for a little bit longer and the guy said, well, why don't you just go over there and check, see if it's all right. So his head mechanic headed over and looked at it. And instead of taking a whole day like they thought it was going to take, it took only 20 minutes to fix that van. And you realize what all the kids in that van were doing while it took them 20 minutes to fix that? We were praying before Almighty God that He would fix this van and help us get to our location. After 20 minutes, the guy gave us the bill, and it was for the, it was only for the part. He did not charge us for his work or for being held after hours or anything. It was just for the part, which was only, I think, $35, which was incredible. And we got to that campsite. But as a result of our car breaking down, our van had a revival. The way up there, we broke out in singing. We had prayer times, which never would have happened if we hadn't had that thing, had that <clears throat> break fail. Which just shows that God used His timing we got there, we got to the campsite, but not before God wanted us to. He wanted to make sure our hearts were where they should be. He got us there, and He supplied our needs, not our wants. We didn't want this to happen. It didn't have to happen. But God saw that as a need, and He got it met in 20 minutes. God also supplied our needs for our spiritual growth and not just our physical comfort. And that was the main thing. God took our physical circumstance that we had and used it for our spiritual growth. And just to finish this out, I'd like to just read once again Philippians 4, 19. Which simply states, And my God will meet all of your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus.